Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth. As we left off, we kind of concluded that it's possible that someone else could have been in the elevator with Mr. Hicks, and it could be that perhaps a murder didn't even, didn't even occur there. It could be taking place at an in-flight shop, which is where, where we're going to go ahead and investigate right now. So, let's go ahead and the investigation is all, while well, the shop is right here to the right, so here we are at the in-flight shop. Man, this is a nice place. This whole entire place is plane is nice. Ugh. I got I gotta fly first class one day. So this is an in-flight shop. It's quite a mess in here. You think? I guess I'll have to clean things up then. Tee hee. Oh that was her. Hold on, you can't clean up a potential crime scene. Oh, thank goodness. I hate cleaning so much. I must rush things here. Must remain cool, calm, and collected, because this piggy bank was left at the crime scene. A possible murder weapon. All right. There's a very good chance that the killer had paid this play, paid this place a visit. All right, time to begin our investigation here. So, hmm. Well, these are some very odd-looking suitcases. Let's take a look at these. What are these? Oh, those are our company's completely original line of suitcases. They're practically flying out the door. That's how popular they are. You should buy one to see how you like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's how things work on this flight, but in the real world, you try, then buy. No way! But either way, it doesn't really matter. True. Either way, why would anyone buy a suitcase after they boarded a plane? Very true, unless you just need more room. Anyway, see that? Just look at all that Mr. iFly hands print on, the, on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? They're painted out of a, with a lot of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? It is certainly making something jump up inside my stomach. Huh? I guess there's no fool in your refined taste. You look like you really want to get one. And I thought I was going to finally make my first sale, but you saw right through it. Glad, you're th glad that's done, though. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? But I never showed any interest in it to begin with. <laughs> it really is ho pretty horrible, isn't it? You want to know something? The suitcase is designed by Miss Rhoda. Miss Tenario designed this? Yeah, it was a com company-wide contest. Um, well, it does have a very sharp design sense. Ha <laughs> Sharp? Like stinky sharp cheddar, maybe? I really have no idea why the big ones decided to go with it. It's so... Bleh! She designed this, did she? It's definitely not what I would have expected. Ah! My god, you okay? I'm fine. Please watch yourself, Miss Mealy. Getting a suitcase freely to roll around has got to be a safety violation. Seriously, you think those will be strapped in or something? Alright, well, we got that. Here, I'll put it back. I don't know how you did it without even touching it, but okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, what about this uh, broken glass here with the shelf? That's something, right? Glass room's display case's door is shattered all over the floor. And it looks like there's nothing on display inside either. Hmm. Wait, actually, I think there is something. What's this? A mini captain's hat? What the hell? What the hell that's about? Wait a minute. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let's look at our information here real quick. I could have sworn. You know, yeah, I did notice something. This, uh, let's take a look at our logic real quick. We have the murder weapon, the, the Mr. Ifly, whatever. The thing is, the mascot is not even fully completed. I believe that little hat comes with the the mascot, because if you even see Cammy, she was holding one, and yeah, it, ha it has a, a little captain's hand on it. So I think these two go together. Hmm. The hat probably used to be on the piggy bank's head. Let's give it a go and see. I believe this piggy bank was forcefully removed from this display case. Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? Huh. Okay. Eh? Really? Don't tell me you don't know what thing you don't know what things go where in the shop. Well, I don't. Miss Miss Rhoda's in charge of this place. So come on, how should I know anything? I sense that further inspection of this display case is needed. 
Hmm. Okay. Um. But we'll go ahead and get out of here. So let's expect this again. So now we can actually get a better look here. But what to look at? Well, there's an empty space here. So we can assume that they said that the, the Mr. Ifly was on display. So can we deduce that the actual uh, Ifly or the mascot was actually here? I think that only makes sense. There's definitely something very unusual about this. About what? If the killer had broken the glass to get the Mr. Ifly bank, there should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Well, that too. Ooh, I see. Yeah, I guess it'd be like that. However, there's not a single piece of glass inside the display case. Nope. N nope, there isn't. Which means that the glass is broken from the inside out. The piggy bank must have fallen over it from the turbulence and right through the glass. Yeah, that's for sure. There's so much glass all over the floor. I'm only betting that this hat was knocked off its head at the time as well. Eh? That's nice. Which leads me to believe that the killer took the iFly from here after a turbulence. Hmm. Okay. But she apparently fell asleep. Take your power after your own time, Miss Melee, and listen to what I'm talking. What? She looks drunk. But the murder occurred before the turbulence, which rules this piggy bank out, out as a murder weapon. So you mean the bank's not the real murder weapon? It's a fake? Yes, at this point, this is a very real possibility. Um, but then what is a- then what- what if when the killer wants to take Mr. Ifly, they broke the glass by accident? The display case is locked, so that's highly unlikely. Yeah, but there's one person who could've. Oh, and who would that be? Miss Rhoda, of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of this place, so she has to keep everything. Miss Rhoda Tanero, huh? Huh. Well, I believe we can go ahead and, um, do some logic here. Because I think if they have the... Let's see, yeah, we have turbulence. We also have suitcase. So I think two and two together, that suitcase could have caused some problems. At least I like to think so, anyway. Yes, there's definitely something wrong here. Uh, uh, what's with the sudden yelling? Tell me, Miss Mealy, don't you think there's something strange about the suitcase? Um, uh, well, sure, they totally ooze strange, like the color and such. That's not what I'm talking about! Now pay attention! Ah, uh, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth! Sorry. <clears throat> These suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. Yeah, they look a bit uptight, don't they? But I guess they take after their creator. <laughs> Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Mealy. Don't you find it unusual these cases are the only things just undisturbed by the turbulence? Never mind, it's, I sooner found my answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. Okay, upon closer inspection, they really are quite hideous. <laughs> I wonder how Miss Rotor would have reacted if she heard you just would heard what you just said. Oh, I feel bad now. What's wrong? She makes a good point. It'll be wise of me to watch what I say out loud. What's this? It's by something that's not quite right. What is so unusual about the suitcase? Huh. Well. Hmm. Actually, I think this is, it looks like the suitcase has stoppers to it to prevent the turbulence from rolling around, I, I think, anyway. Maybe that's what he's talking about? This is what it's so odd. I don't think that's that strange at all. Well, maybe not to this extent. Oh, damn it. Okay, let's do that again. Maybe... Maybe they're talking about these set of wheels. I know something about the... Hold on. Yeah. Okay, this has it, but this doesn't. So maybe that's what's so odd about it. There's, there's, there's something very peculiar about these wheels. Huh? As in... As in... There are no stoppers in the place of these. Without stoppers, one would think that the turbulence would have it sent flying. And, uh, and so it's very likely that these suitcases are placed here after we hit the turbulence. Let's take a look. At, let's take a closer look at, at it, shall we? All right. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit. 
Take a look around. Let's see. What the? Hold on, that doesn't look right. Uh, well, wait a minute. I don't know, why does it look like the... Hmm. Let's see, I'm still looking around here. No. I thought that... Hmm. Oh, wait. Could that be it? Yeah, that's the... something was weird. The wheel's completely covered in something. This color and the scent appears the substance is a question in grape juice. But why would there be juice in a wheel of a suitcase? Yeah, okay, that's, that's not it. Hmm. Well, what else is there? Oh! Perhaps we can open up this case. It appears to be unlo unlocked. Let's take a closer look at what's inside. A piece of cloth. And soaked with blood! Uh oh! Ah! It's blood! It appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to armor after all. Oh boy! Oh, I got back my health. Okay, good. So explain this to me. What does this suitcase have to do with the murder? I believe it's pretty safe to say that the killer used this suitcase in some manner, such as to move something, perhaps. Uh, but aren't you just talking about a the cloth then? That alone is too small. <laughs> A large item would be needed to move from what, I, what I'm thinking of. Ow. The thing I believe the killer used the suitcase or transport is... It's very possible that they could actually mean the body itself if the actual murder took place here. Theory-wise. Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is covered, also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? Depends how big the bag is, but I guess that's possible. <laughs> Once I got all that, okay. But, but, in light of this, I'd say that Mr. Hicks has moved into the elevator from someplace else. Which means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. So you're saying that after moving a body into the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase here and just left it? Exactly. What is it? Um, nothing. Just that, I was thinking about what Miss Rhoda said about coming here for something... Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, there she is. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. I'm very sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, but the captain feels that he has allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. I understand his sentiments. However, if I'm not allowed to complete my investigation, the crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. I must stop that. He says I'd be allowed to oversee the per preservation of two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's really a condition, I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way that I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Sounds like fun! We can camp out and watch over everything together! I found proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge, and I have enough evidence to prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Melia reminded me about Miss Tenario, I can't allow my investigation to end here. The truth must come to light. Alright, so there we go. We got our first break in this case. Um, so, so far, I think we're doing okay. We got, uh, we made a pretty good, pretty pretty much good headway into this case. Uh, well, first, here, here we are, we're being suspected, but pretty much we kind of dashed the hopes of that. Um, it seems that like we even got the murder location or crime scene uh, being a different place in the lounge or in the elevator so I guess that can be good as well but there's still a lot that we have to figure out like exactly what was uh, Rhoda doing uh, downstairs like in the first lounge when Edgeworth is there and what did she want to do with the, in the what did she want to do in the shop and in the attendance room and well there's all that we got to figure out I mean I guess you can make your suspicions that perhaps it was her, but well, I don't know. I kind of don't want to pin that, pin that anyone just now, but you never know. You, these, these cases can go anywhere. I mean, we we've seen how things turn out in the, in these series of games. Something totally unsuspect, un, unexpected could happen at any time, and it's like, well, didn't see that one coming. So you never know, guys. You just never know. 
So next time, I guess we're going to be continuing our investigation, and uh, we'll see what we can figure out. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. I'll see you guys later.